So you're starting to find on your dryer that it's maybe taking a little longer to dry than it used to. Uh, or you're noticing maybe not as much uh, lint in your lint filter that there used to be. One of the causes of that can be a worn uh, drum seal or drum gasket. Some dryers only have one, some have one on either end of the drum. But chances are that may be what's starting to give you the issue. So you may want to look at replacing that gasket. So in order to do this repair safely, you want to remove power from the dryer. So you're going to want to remove the cord from the wall outlet or turn off your breaker or remove the fuses from your panel. As well, you're going to need a few tools in order to do this job. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. You're going to need, I use vice grips because when we go to change our drum felt, you wind up have to gluing it back into place from where the original one was. And because you're working around that whole circumference, you'll need something to hold it. So you can use clothespins, you can use large paper clips. As well, I like to have a blanket down on my work surface. so I know I'm not going to scratch anything up. And I use a little magnetic tray just to put all my screws in so they don't get lost and I'm aware where they all are. So now our first step is going to be from the back side of the dryer, just to remove three screws so that we can remove the top. And they're just located right under here and they're just regular Phillips screws. Now the top just gets pulled straight back and left it off. So our next step we're going to do is we're going to take a couple screws out here in the top corners of the console and so we can tip that forward and remove the wiring off the control panel. So our goal in doing this is to get to the point where we can actually take the front of the dryer off completely. So with the screws removed, we're just going to grip the console and while lifting up and pulling back towards myself, be able to tip this forward. And now we can start removing the wires off the control board. So just squeeze the locking tab and just give it a pull. And this will be our next one. And now we can set the console to one side. So our next step is going to be to open our door. And what we're after is these two screws. They have to be removed. Once they're removed, we're going to want to remove these four. And in doing so, that will release the front. When you go to take that last screw out, that front is going to want to come away from the machine. So I usually just put my leg against it, just so that it can't take off. Now with the front loose, we're just going to tip it forward and there's a wiring harness here for the door switch that we have to remove. So now we're just going to release this wiring harness from the switch. One of the things you'll want to watch when doing this is all the metal pieces in these machines are just stamped out. They're not necessarily milled smooth, so they are sharp. So you just want to be careful that you're not going to cut yourself when your hand comes up against something. So with that wiring harness removed, we're just going to tip the front forward and lift it off the, uh, the brackets at the bottom. So our next steps will be is to remove this upper bracket and the lower chute, and then we'll be removing the front bulkhead. Now I know this seems like a lot of parts and a lot of screws, but you actually find the repair is quite easy once you get into it. So we have a screw here. There's another one straight up from here. And the same thing on the other side. Now we can just lift the bracket off the cabinet. You'll see there's a wiring harness held in a clip. And we're just going to pop that out of there so it's free and clear. And we'll set this where we don't need it. Just going to again free the harness from this clip. 
So we can set it out of our way. We also have a wiring harness that goes to the light bulb. So we'll just want to pop that off now while we're right here. Fantastic. So now we're just going to remove the lower blower housing. We have one screw right here. And we may as well remove the lint filter right now because it'll be in our way when we go to pull this housing off. Let me just set that inside. From the other side, we're going to want to remove the screw as well. And that allows that to come right off. And we'll set that out of the way. So our next objective is to remove the front. So you can see we have a little wiring harness here. So to disconnect the harness, we just go to squeeze that tab and give it a little, just a little tug, and it separates. So now we're just going to remove the two screws on either side. And the nice thing about this is that bulkhead is locked into the cabinet with four tabs. So if we take all the screws out, nothing's going to come falling out on the floor on us. With those screws removed, we're just going to hold that tub towards the back, lift this bulkhead off the tabs. And the bulkhead's removed, and we'll set it to one side. So now we want to remove our drum. And to do that, we have to release the belt off the motor pulleys. So if between my thumbs was the actual drum, you can see how the belt comes around the drum, around the idler pulley, and onto the motor pulley. So to take it off, all I did was basically apply a little pressure onto this idler, allowing that to come slack. I flipped it off that pulley, then the idler pulley, let that go, and then my drum and belt were free to come out. So our belt is free, and we're actually going to use that to help support the drum when we take it out. So to replace the drum felt, first thing we want to do is just remove the old one. And to do that, we're just going to peel it over, and these are glued on. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure. Do that all the way around the drum. And then just rip her off. And that's no longer usable for anything, so we'll just throw that away. I'm just going to run my fingers around and make sure there's Nothing that gets stuck in there from use. Now we're ready to put the new one on. Now we're ready to install your new drum felt, your drum seal. Um, so what we're going to do is just set it around the edge. And it looks like it's way too small. This is actually the right part for it. Uh, they all appear this way. All drum felts, in order to fit properly, need to be stretched in order to be put on. So. What you do is you just take your new drum felt, put your foot on it, and just give it a little bit of pressure and stretch it out a bit. Just a little bit more. that's got us very close. So now we can start just sending it down over the edge. And you want to have the stitched side down towards the drum. And our vice grips, we'll just give it a little clamp to work as an extra pair of hands. And then just work it around.
And there are your drum felts on and in place. So now we just, uh, now that we have our drum felt in place, uh, we just need to apply a little bit of adhesive to the underside of this stitched edge, and that will hold it onto the drum. We'll let it set up for a few minutes, and then we'll put the drum back into the dryer. And we're just squeezing a thin bead up underneath that lip. Doesn't have to be a huge amount, just a thin line. And you'll see it squeeze out. And just work your way around the drum. Just give a little squeeze all the way around. And just wipe up the extra glove that you may squeeze out. And there. Just let that set up for about 10 minutes and then you're ready to install your drum. Okay, so now that the glue has had a chance to set up, we're just going to remove our, our makeshift clamps. And now we're ready to install our drum. What we want to do is just lasso our drum with the belt. And we'll use the belt to help support the drum as we set it into place. Set the drum onto our rear drum rollers. Get our belt in the general area where it, where it would have been before. Line up with our motor and our idler pulley. Now I'm just going to reach in and attach that uh, belt around the motor pulley and underneath the idler, and we'll be ready to go. Taking the left side of the motor pulley belt, raising the idler pulley up, slipping the belt underneath it, and release. And you can give it a turn just to make sure that everything's lined up. May want to tweak the belt a little bit to get it straightened away. If you see it's really far off track. So now we're just going to put the front back on. And again, I mentioned earlier that there's notches here in the cabinet where these locking pins for the bulkhead slip into place which makes it really easy when you put it back together. You're just going to put the, swing it around. You'll be looking to get these drum rollers just down on this bottom edge of the drum and then negotiate those locking tabs into those spots on the cabinet. And there's the other side, just that easy. And now we'll put our four screws back in to hold it and we'll consider that piece done. So I'll put our four screws in, two on this side, one on the top, one on the bottom. Snug those up. Then we'll just move over to the other side and do the same. Now that that's secured, it's not a bad time to bring your electrical harness back up into place. But now we just want to drop our harness into that clip. This is the harness for the door switch. And then we had one we removed for the light right here. So we'll reattach that. Now we can move on down to the lower end and put that uh, lint filter blower housing in place. That simply just slides back up to where your lint filter comes through. There's two screws that go in, one right here and one over on this side. As well as we have the wiring harness for our sensor, that needs to be reconnected. There, with all that done, we're now ready to put the front back on. Okay, with our front bulkhead in place, next piece we wanna reattach is the uh, top bracket. And you'll notice on the bracket, there's these little L-shaped hooks. And on the cabinet, a little hard to see with that foam tape there, but there's a notch right there that it locks into. And it's the same on this side. You can see that notch a little better. We're just gonna bring this up into place. Make sure this wire's tucked into this notch. 
lock that side in, move over to the other side, and you'll have to wiggle that corner around a little bit. To, there it is, and just push that down. Now you just need to put the screws in for it. There is one from the front and one from the top. And it was the same for the other side. One in the front. And one in the top. Perfect. So now we're ready to install the front. I'm putting the front on. You'll notice there's a locator bracket down here. And there's one on the other side. And on your front. So on the bottom of your front panel, there's a slot on this side and down at the other end as well. And those slots go on those locating tabs. So now we just bring our front around. Drop those slots onto those tabs. Bring it up towards the dryer. Remember we have to connect that wiring harness for the light switch. And that just simply pushes into place. Marry the front up to the dryer and we'll put a screw in to hold it. One more on this side. Two screws over on this side. And if you remember, inside the door, there were two down here that we're going to put in now. And seeing as we have the door open, we may as well put the lint filter back in. We'll close our door. And now we just need to install our console. Okay, so now we're going to hook up our, our wiring. And we'll just start with that blue connector. And if you remember, everything was color coded. It makes it nice and easy. Push it into place. We'll do the pink one next. And we have a large white one. And the last one we have is this multicolored harness. And the only place that can go is right there. And all your wires are connected. So now we'll just move our console into place. And at the same time, we've got that harness from the door switch. And we'll just put it back into its little keepers so it doesn't get into trouble. And there's another one here as well. And just tuck those wires in. Perfect. Now to go back to the console, it's into place and we just got to give it a little push. And you can see and hear it lock into place. Now we're ready to put the top back on. So now that our console snapped back into place, we just have to put our two screws in, one in each corner. And now our top is ready to go back on. Just lay the top into place and slide it forward. And we just have our three screws to put in across the back. So now the dryer is all back together, give yourself a pat in the back. Like I said earlier, it's a lot of screws and a lot of pieces, but you'll see it if you follow step by step, it's quite easy to do. So now's the time you want to make sure the dryer is back into place and you want to reconnect your power. Either put the cord back into the outlet or you're going to want to reset your breaker or if you've got the screw and type fuses, screw in your fuses and you're good to go.